Generally, swine flus do not transmit from person to person. The reason that there's such a hoopla in the discussion about it is that now the flu that's floating around is a swine flu that's a hybrid. It's got some genes from swine flu, some from an avian flu, and some from human flu. The mixture is new. It's not been seen before. And as you've heard from the media, there's a big concern because in Mexico, a number of people have died, close to 100 or 150. Last night they said 80, this morning they said 150 people in Mexico. There have not been any deaths in the United States. As of this morning, there were a number of cases known in San Diego and Imperial counties. Yesterday, there was a case confirmed at a school in uh, Fair Oaks near Sacramento, and this morning they confirmed three more cases from the same school. In New York City, there was a cluster of kids who had been traveling to Mexico as a Easter, on an Easter spring break project, came back to that private school in New York, and there have been a large cluster of teenage patients among the people who were in contact. Most influenza affects elderly and young children. This epidemic is, children, is people between teenage years and 54 years old. Thank God I'm 55. No. <laughs> I'm not, I'm 56, but who cares? Um, we've been working since Saturday. Lily and I um, met on Saturday and outlined what we need to do to move forward. By Sunday afternoon, we pulled together 15 or 16 people for a Sunday afternoon meeting because the level of concern in the United States has gone up. And as you've heard, the uh, president and the acting director of the CDC have declared this a pandemic level four. What that means is there's clear documentation of human-to-human -human transmission. For it to be a full-level pandemic, the level six, which is the highest level, it would have to be well-documented in two very uh, uh, far-apart areas in the world. So far, it's Central America and uh, or Mexico, North America. There are now more outbreaks in New Zealand, in Australia, in Israel, and in some places in Europe. In order to prepare for what might come, we are being pushed up, ramped up to a higher level. So we have declared here um, that uh, an incident, a hospital incident command center, which means that we've sort of enacted um, and triggered the pro procedure for preparing for a pandemic. In our meetings, the things that we discovered, just as an example, are that we had three doses, that is three courses, of Tamiflu available. We had three viral transport media sample of vials available. That's all we had, okay? That's the level at which things were on Sunday. Starting yesterday, we had created, with the help of the laboratory, Hank Solution as a substitute for the uh, commercial viral transport medium. Today, large numbers of viral transport medium vials will be delivered. Tamiflu has been released by the federal government. There were 50 million vials, or doses being held um, in a reserve. 12 million or a quarter of those have been released for use in the border states that include California. So we will be getting Tamiflu here. Um, the testing for viral uh, diseases in critically ill hospital patients has been already done through the California Respiratory Project. Any patient in our ICU who has a critical respiratory illness gets tested and samples get sent to the state health lab. So for us, it's very easy to step up and say, well, we're not just sending those samples, we'll also send our diagnostic tests for flu. Now, what about the flu tests? The rapid diagnostic tests for influenza A and B may not pick up the swine flu. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't, but it's not 100%. Critically ill patients have to all have samples sent directly for the PCR test. We are bypassing Alameda County with permission of the county to have our samples go directly to the state lab so that we'll get a rapid turnaround time on any samples. Who should be tested? In an, at an, an, sorry, in an attempt to answer this question, we put together the handout that you had at the back of the room was given to you. It was also sent yesterday by email to all members on the, of the medical staff who have electronic access. If you did not get this, please notify the medical staff office because we want to make sure that it went out to everyone. Steve Yedlin also sent it to all members of CFMG. We've attached to it a one-page, two-sided pamphlet. It's like a trifold thing. We patterned this after the one that was provided by the CDC, and you can imagine that in the hoopla of trying to move this along quickly, we thought, oh, the CDC has a pamphlet about swine flu. Let's just use it. 
And Pat, who was kindly sitting next to me and reading the details while I was blabbing, said, hey, look at this. And the whole thing was about how pigs get swine flu from pigs and nothing <laughs> about humans. So we decided we had to revise that, and this is what you see now. And um, the media department here is working on this, and it's not in a... Uh, the most beautiful form yet, it's going to be colored and who knows what, but we decided not to put distracting pictures of pigs because people will see the pigs and say, well, I don't have contact with pigs, I'm not worried about it. We don't want that to happen. So we've given you the preliminary copy of this. It's also been attached as a PDF file to the email that you got yesterday. Uh, and you're welcome to use this if you want to educate people in your office. We're going to have it also made into posters that are going to be in all the waiting areas so that people while waiting can have a chance to read something and learn a little bit more about the swine flu. Currently it's in English, it's being translated into Spanish. We've worked hard to try to filter so that anyone who walks into the hospital system comes first to a security desk or an ambassador's desk and all the cards that are being used, have been used in the past for visitors to the nursery and Five South are now going to be used for all visitors to the hospital and that card is also in Spanish on one side and English on the other. Saying that if you have these symptoms don't come in and visit and people, visitors who go up to the fifth floor or any other floor in the hospital will need to take the card with them to show that they've been screened so that they're not symptomatic and bringing disease into the hospital. If you look on the one page summary it spells out very clearly who should be tested. The difficulty is the case definition is very broad anyone with a temp over 100 or 30 degree, 37.8 centigrade and respiratory symptom that includes cough or sore throat and now they've also added runny nose or some combinations of these should be considered to have the respiratory disease that's consistent with swine flu but we're not going to be working everybody up. We're going to selectively work up those who've been to a demographic area where there's been reported cases or who have direct contact with someone who has a documented case of swine flu. That's in the epidemiologic links on the first page. If people meet those criteria, they can either be tested in your office if you're able to get the viral transport medium and the swabs. We also didn't have the appropriate number of swabs. Now we will and the person who is collecting the sample who may be sneezed or coughed upon should be wearing the appropriate personal protective equipment so that they don't catch the, the flu from the person they're testing. So if you can do it in your office, by all means. If you do it in your office, it should be sent to Alameda County Health Department. As a service to the community and to the physicians, we are trying to set up, and we're almost there, a system whereby you can refer your suspicious patients here and the collection can be done here. And in order to do that, they need to have the clinical criteria and the epidemiologic link. And then um, one of the attachments that you got also had, and you can easily get, the referral form that's used to send patients as an expect patient to the emergency room. If you send your patients in because they meet these criteria and you've already done that assessment, we're trying to set it up in such a way that they don't have to be seen by a physician or resident uh, in the ER, that they can go directly to be tested have the test samples collected and then be sent home. And that process will hopefully move forward fairly quickly for those patients who have both the clinical and epidemiologic risks for swine flu. This is an ever, uh, ever, always changing process. Every few hours there's an update from the county, the state, or the CDC. And as you can imagine, when Lily and I are meeting in various meetings all day long, we can't keep up with those. So we're, the system is set up in such a way that we have someone who's looking at those um, alerts that are coming in constantly so that we can kind of stay abreast of what is expected of us. Currently the intent is to test all patients in the hospital setting who have <coughs> acute respiratory illnesses, patients who come in who have the epidemiologic link and respiratory illnesses, but not all people in the community who have colds. Okay? If your patients in your clinic don't have reason to have connected connection with um, Southern California, San Diego and Imperial Counties, Texas, and Mexico, don't go testing all of them. Don't encourage them to be tested and certainly don't just send them to go to the ER because the backlog in the ER can be horrendous. Yesterday over the noon hour there were 53 patients in the ER in, in just that one hour block of time and the majority of those were people who were coming in because they were worried. The kid with the pneumothorax, the kid with the Tylenol overdose, the kid you know who was in respiratory distress, the kid who had an alternate uh, ALTE who needed to be taken care of urgently, we get all confused when there's so many. So we've got to ramp up our triage system and our hope is that we'll have regular ER patients in ED1, 
the not so sick in ED2, and we'll have a third location where patients can be tested if they're just being referred in to be tested for flu because they do have a link. Uh, 